Epcot has some of the most well-loved and hated rides across all of Disney World property, but what have each of these rides done to earn their famous or infamous reputations? Find out today here on DFB Guide. Hey everybody, it's AJ for Disney Food Vlog. So the rides at Epcot are a unique assortment. They work together to bring a variety of fun options to the park, but some may not be your favorite. So today we're talking about why Epcot's rides can be the best for some, but also the worst for others. This way, you'll know exactly what rides you need to be prioritizing during your upcoming trip. We're gonna start with the best, as we always do with these videos. Now, I love how many different rides are available in Epcot. You've got your dark rides, your thrill rides, you've got your edutainment rides, where you'll accidentally learn a thing or two against your will. So let's start with the best rides for kids of all ages. Now, these are the rides with no height requirements. Anyone can ride them. And Epcot's got quite a few rides that are good for the whole family. The most popular ones being Frozen Ever After, that boat ride in Norway, and the trackless Remy's Ratatouille adventure in the the France Pavilion. Insider tip, though most of the restaurants and shops around the World Showcase pavilions don't officially open until 11 a.m., these two rides open bright and early as soon as the park opens, so you can still head to them as your first rides of the day. In fact, if you're using your early theme park entry, which allows all Disney World Resort guests to enter into any of the parks on any day 30 minutes before they officially open to non-resort guests, then you can get in line for either one of these even earlier to help cut down on the massive wait times both rides tend to see all day long. Next is the Grand Fiesta Tour, starring the Three Caballeros. It's another slow-going boat ride inside the Mexico Pavilion that also opens along with the park, and also has no height requirement. But I wouldn't exactly recommend hitting up this ride first thing in the morning. I'll explain why later on. Outside the World Showcase, you've got three other rides made for all ages. The first is Journey into Imagination with Figment. This is a dark ride that travels through the five senses alongside a mischievous purple dragon named Figment. Once you get off the ride, the exit area is home to interactive games and meet and greets with characters from Wreck-It Ralph and Inside Out. Now, whether you love Figment or not, this little purple guy has gathered quite the cult following over the years. And if you want to be a part of the Figment fan club too, check out our Figment shirt on the DFB Store website. That's dfbstore.com. Look how cute it is. It's a little figgy rainbow with a fan favorite quote. It's the perfect fit for those who want to show their love for Epcot in the most unique way. You're definitely going to get compliments on this in the park. The Seas with Nemo and Friends is a must for families with young kids. Not only is this a slow moving Omni Mover ride that goes through the story of finding Finding Nemo that your kids are going to get a kick out of, but the ride ends in the sea base where there are multiple aquariums with all kinds of underwater creatures. While you're there, don't forget to watch the turtle talk with Crush where kids can ask Crush questions that he answers in real time. This was a no-brainer for my kid who was an absolute activity junkie. Sometimes Sea Base Alpha, which is the aquarium area, is the only place he could just kind of let loose and run around and explore. And then there's Living with the Land, another easygoing boat ride, only this one will take you through the Disney greenhouses over in the Land Pavilion. These greenhouses grow produce that Epcot actually uses in some of their restaurants and festival food booths, so it's pretty cool to see not only where your meal's coming from, but how cast members are using systems sustainable practices to help these plants thrive and taste good too. Our next set of best rides are the ones with high speed thrills. All right, big kids, it is your turn now. When it comes to having the best thrill rides in a Disney park, Disney's Hollywood Studios probably takes the cake, but Epcot's still got a few competitors that adrenaline junkies are gonna love. I think, maybe. I'll explain my hesitance here in just a bit. The newest and only coaster in the park, Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind, is one of the longest indoor roller coasters not just in Disney, but in the world. In fact, the show building is so big that by volume, four spaceship Earths could fit inside of it. Yeah, not kidding, it's a big one. The attraction is a family-friendly Omni coaster, which means that the ride vehicles, aka Star Jumpers, spin a full 360 degrees on the track while traveling at high speeds. Oh, and did I mention it also launches backwards? I know this all sounds pretty intense, but really, the coaster feels more like a smoother version of Space Mountain meets Rock and Roller Coaster. You have a few twists and turns and cool spacey scenes, but no giant drops or upside down loops to worry about. Actually, the best part about this ride, in my opinion, is the randomized 80s songs. Each time you ride this one, you'll have the potential of getting one of six songs to rock out to, including September, Disco Inferno, Conga, Everybody Wants to Rule the World, which is the best one, I don't care what any of you say. 
I ran, and one way or another. Meanwhile, over at Test Track, you'll have the chance to create your own vehicle while you wait in that queue. Then when it's your time to ride, you'll be able to test out your creation on a track that feels very Tron-like. There are four different tests your car will have to be put through to see if it's gonna come out on top capability, efficiency, responsiveness, and power. But the best test of the bunch in terms of thrills is the power. That's when your vehicle can reach up to 65 miles per hour, which means Test Track is the fastest ride you can experience in all of Disney World. The funny thing about all of Epcot's most thrilling rides is that they're all kept inside the World Discovery area, and that goes for Mission Space too. Mission Space is all about the spinning, and that's the way you want to experience it. This ride is a NASA flight training simulator where you can choose one of two missions. The green mission provides more mild thrills with light movement in your training cabin, while the orange mission has super intense G4 spins that make you feel like you're blasting off into space. Similar to Smuggler's Run in Hollywood Studios, you'll be assigned a role, commander, pilot, navigator, or engineer. But unlike Smuggler's Run, your actions don't really impact the course of this ride, so you don't have to worry about messing something up, especially if you're feeling really nauseated. Now, what are the best rides when your feet are absolutely killing you? When you hit the parks running, there's bound to be an afternoon slump that'll creep up on you, even if you don't want it to. If you've been to any kind of theme park ever, then you know the feeling all too well. Your feet ache, your eyes are heavy, you're hot and sticky. You might be a little grouchy too. Don't deny it, it happens to all of us. And when you need a ride that's nice and gentle and just a little bit longer than a typical ride through, Epcot does have some attractions that'll allow you to sit for a bit and take a breather. These rides also tend to have little to no weights all day long, so you don't have to stress about your feet cramping even more while standing idle in the queue. The two longest rides in Epcot with some of the shortest lines are Living with the Land and Spaceship Earth. Living with the Land takes about 14 minutes, which makes sense. After all, Disney doesn't really want you blasting through their greenhouses, so this boat ride's usually deemed as one of the most relaxing rides in all of Disney World. Spaceship Earth, on the other hand, not only takes you inside the big golf ball shaped sphere at the front of the park, but it's also a 15 minute long ride. Though to be fair, it doesn't really feel that long because there's just so much to see with all the animatronics, choose your own future game, and rich history that Dame Judi Dench narrates to me while I'm on board. I love her. Warning though, if you have an advanced dining reservation you need to get to soon, I'd probably skip out on Spaceship Earth until after you eat. Now here's why. Even if you have a little more than 15 minutes to spare, this ride has the tendency to stop midway through at times for both technical issues and to help other guests on and off the Omnimover vehicles. This can end up setting you back an extra five to 10 minutes or even longer, depending on what's going on with the ride. So just to play it safe, make sure your schedule's fairly free before boarding this one in order to skip any unnecessary stress. And what about single riders? Well, you don't have to be a party of one to reap the benefits of this point. Actually, bigger parties can still use this line skipping strategy for free, but you can only use said strategy on two Epcot rides, and that's Test Track and Soarin' Around the World, aka the screen-based flight simulator ride that has a soundtrack that makes me want to weep openly, and a pre-show starring Patrick Walburton, so what more could you want? Your whole group is free to get in either of these single rider lines together, but just know you'll likely be split up once it's time to ride. The reason single rider lines exist in the first place is to fill empty seats created by odd numbered groups. So unless the line is incredibly short already, expect to be separated. Keep this in mind if you're trying to use the single rider line and have a younger child, since they might have to ride alone. Some single rider lines can take longer than others, which we've experienced for test track more than a few times before, but it's likely that the wait times will still be much shorter than the typical lines, and you don't even need to purchase Disney Genie Plus to pull it off. All right, are you ready for the worst rides in Epcot? Now, sure, Epcot rides can be great, but they can also derail your day if they're not right for you. So let's first talk about those rides that cause unexpected terror. What's a Disney World trip without a little nightmare fuel, right? In all seriousness though, Epcot's rides might be family friendly, but that doesn't mean there aren't parts of them that can still catch younger riders off guard and make them question whether begging to go to Disney World was the right decision. So just to give you a heads up, here are a few Epcot rides that aren't scary per se, but could seem scary for new riders. 
Journey Through Imagination with Figment isn't actually scary. Sometimes it plays tricks on your eyes and ears with fun mirror and sound illusions, and sometimes it plays tricks on your nose with bad smells. But the freaky part doesn't happen till the end. And by the way, this part has been a part of the ride since I was a kid, way back in the 80s, and it still scares me. So after you ride through Figment's upside down backlit fun house, your vehicle will pull up to a screen that leads into Figment's full on jump scare sentence, Imagination is a blast! What follows is a blast of air against your face as you're thrown into darkness. It's jarring for those who aren't expecting it and might be terrifying for those little ones who really aren't expecting it. And if the burst of air didn't scare you, then Nigel Channing's face plastered onto the moon might still do the trick. But what happens when that blast of air happens is kind of these walls drop and you start to see all of the fun imagination stuff. But it's kind of like a lightning strike, thunderclap, blast of air, loud noise. So anybody who's a little bit nervous about that sort of thing, like me, I still close my ears when I get to that part. That'll surprise you. So maybe do a little ride through video of that for your kids so they can see when it's going to happen and kind of prepare them for it if you know that it's something that will bother them. Now, The Seas with Nemo and Friends is mostly just fun and swimming. Show scenes include a realm of jellyfish, the totally rad EA Sea, and our personal favorite Peach the Starfish breaking the fourth wall by complaining about having to listen to the Big Blue World song on repeat. Man, we can't blame her. Toward the beginning of the ride, though, things get real dark and spooky and you'll come across an anglerfish animatronic chasing poor Marlin around. The anglerfish's black light design causes his terrifying form to pop out against the dark, making his quick movements feel as if he could jump right out of the scene and into your shell vehicle. It's a cool effect, but for younger riders, this fish battle can get pretty freaky. Over in Frozen Ever After, now, this ride is actually pretty chill. Get it? Okay. The ride focuses on the anniversary of the day Princess Anna saved Queen Elsa, although you don't need to know the premise to enjoy the show scenes. But toward the end of the ride, after Elsa sends your boat backwards using her ice powers, you'll be greeted by a rather impressive animatronic, Marshmallow the Snow Monster. Now, Marshmallow means well, but his massive form and monstrous appearance can be kind of intimidating, not to mention he also blows a puff of smoke at the guests before sending them down a small drop that kids probably aren't expecting either. If you want to test the waters and see how your kids are going to respond to these types of rides before your trip, like I said with Journey into Imagination, check out the full POV ride-throughs that our friends over at allears.net have collected on their YouTube channel. That way you can prepare your children for what the rides will be like ahead of time while also gauging whether or not they'll induce unforeseen trauma when you force your kids to go on them in the first place. All right, this next group of rides are the worst, but not because you're going to want to skip them. Rather, they're the worst because they could prevent you from getting on other Epcot rides if you don't play your cards right. So let me explain. Epcot has a few rides in the park that tend to rack up a hefty wait time. These include Remy's Ratatouille Adventure, Frozen Ever After, and Test Track. Soren can also get pretty long lines at times, but tends to have lower waits sporadically throughout the day too. You just got to keep an eye on the wait times via your My Disney Experience app and time things right. At the start of the day and the very end of the day, the wait times for these experiences will be at their lowest. So that's when you're gonna wanna get in line for them, especially if you don't plan on using Disney Genie Plus. If you're planning on getting to Epcot super early, either at rope drop or during the early theme park entry, just to hit up the rides when they're at their lowest weights, you will not need to get in line for Grand Fiesta Tour, Journey into Imagination with Figment, Living with the Land, The Seas with Nemo and Friends, or Spaceship Earth. Normally, these rides will have very short waits all day long, so even if you're trying to find something to ride in the afternoon, they shouldn't give you too much trouble. Maybe Spaceship Earth will get a little long, but the rest of those will not. So hit up the big lines, Test Track, Frozen Ever After, Remy's Ratatouille Adventure, at the start or end of the day, and leave these shorter waits for early, mid, late afternoon. Now, warning, this advice goes straight out the window if you decide to visit around Epcot's busiest seasons, so Thanksgiving week, the week after Christmas, and around New Year's Eve and day. Since everything is crowded then, that's when having lightning lanes can be your greatest asset since lines will be massive everywhere. And we've made it to the motion sickness part of this video. While some rides like Journey into Imagination and Grand Fiesta Tour will take things nice and easy for you, other rides will truly test the strength of your stomach. Test Track, for instance, has high speeds, fast turns, and sudden stopping that could jostle someone a little too much who's riding on a full or even empty stomach. Remy's Ratatouille Adventure, on the other hand, can leave you feeling a little bit queasy due to the dramatic shifts between oversized sets and 3D screens. Because Cosmic Rewind is an omni coaster, which will spin you around a full 360 degrees during the course of the ride, as well as have you launching backwards in the beginning, this ride can leave you with that saliva pooling around your tongue feeling, aka 
yeah, right before something bad happens. But the worst of the bunch, actually the worst in all of Disney World, has got to be the infamous Mission Space. A shuttle that's supposed to simulate a space launch should be enough of a forewarning for you, but let me really paint the picture for you here. If you choose the orange mission on Mission Space, then expect a centrifuge that spins and tilts. This helps the ride simulate the speed and g-forces of being in a real live space shuttle, and that's cool, except for the fact that most of us probably aren't meant to suit up and be launched into orbit. So Disney's own website even notes that guests who wish to experience the orange side should be free of motion sickness. So yeah, if Disney's fully warning you of this and including barf bags on the ride, then you know it's serious. You can also choose the green mission, which is not as intense and doesn't include the spinning. However, this version still uses a motion simulator that offers light movement. So while it's less likely to cause motion sickness, you'll still want to be cautious if general motion simulators upset your tummy. If you still want to ride these rides, make sure to plan ahead. Pack over-the-counter nausea meds and nausea patches in your park bag and maybe a few ginger candies or peppermints to help settle slightly upset stomachs post-ride. It's also good to know where Epcot's first aid center is located. They have saved me when I've had to ride Guardians of the Galaxy multiple times over just in case you forget your meds or you need a cool and quiet place to rest and allow your stomach to settle. The first aid center in Epcot is on the side of the Odyssey Pavilion heading towards the Mexico Pavilion and it's completely free to use if you need it. Now this next set of rides can be a real bummer for people who forget about the virtual queues that are in place. Just in case you forgot, or if you haven't heard about it before, I'm here to remind you that Cosmic Rewind still doesn't have a normal standby queue just yet. Ever since the grand opening of Rise of the Resistance in Hollywood Studios back in 2019, Disney's been using virtual queue systems to help manage crowd levels for their brand new rides. Well, I guess it started in Disneyland, right? With Rise of the Resistance even earlier in 2019. Now, when Tron Light Cycle Run opened up in Magic Kingdom this year, we kind of thought the virtual queue for Cosmic Rewind would go away since it had been dethroned as the newcomer, but not the case. So per the release of this video, you're still going to need to grab a boarding group number from your My Disney Experience app in order to experience both Tron and Cosmic Rewind for your upcoming trip, since a regular standby queue isn't in place for either of those rides at this time. You can also buy an individual lightning lane for these. Now that doesn't mean a standby queue won't appear for Cosmic Rewind later on in the year, but if you're heading to Epcot anytime soon, go ahead and study up on that virtual queue and boarding pass and individual lightning lane system because you're more than likely going to need it. In order to grab a boarding group number for that virtual queue, you'll want to make sure you've set up your account, linked your tickets and hotel reservations, and that all the members of your party have either set up their accounts, this is in my Disney experience by the way, and linked their information or you've set up the friends and family accounts for them. Either way, you want to make sure you can access everyone's information so one person can make virtual queue selections for everybody. Here are the basic rules for the Guardian's virtual queue. The first sign-up time opens at 7 a.m. You don't need to be in the park at that time to join, but you do need an Epcot Park Pass reservation. The second sign-up time opens at 1 p.m. You need to be in Epcot at that time to join the virtual queue. There may be an additional sign-up time at 6 p.m. on days when extended evening hours is offered in Epcot. You don't need to be in Epcot to join at that time, but you must qualify for extended evening hours, which means you're staying at a Disney Deluxe Hotel, Deluxe Villa, or one of the other qualifying hotels. The virtual queue system can be skipped entirely if you decide to purchase an individual lightning lane for it instead, which would help you guarantee a spot in line rather than chance it with the virtual queues. It will also give you the opportunity to choose when your ride return time is rather than waiting around the park until your boarding group number is called. Just keep in mind that individual lightning lanes are available to purchase at 7 a.m. for Disney World hotel guests. All non-hotel guests will have to wait until the parks officially open before making their individual lightning lane purchases, which is usually around 9 a.m. Whether you choose the virtual queue path or the individual lightning lane path, you're going to need your My Disney experience all set up and ready to go. If you want a deeper look into how the boarding groups work, we've got a post on our DFB website that'll take you through the process step by step. I'll go ahead and link it down in the description below just in case you want to check it out. So let me hear from you now. Which Epcot ride is by far and away your favorite must-do attraction that you never want to skip? For me, it's Spaceship Earth. Or if you're about to go to Epcot for the first time ever, which ride are you most looking forward to? Let me know down in the comments. And as always, keep tuning in with the DFA squad for your Disney World news, your advice, and the best of recommendations. Thanks for listening, everyone, and thanks for watching. As always, this is AJ for Disney Food Blog, and we'll see you real soon.